Is Uber Traveler profitable? This is something that I've been wondering for a while as well. So to test it, I decided to kill him again, and again, and again, and repeat this process about a hundred times. Now, boss fights in Torchlight Infinite can be pretty high variance, so don't expect to profit on every attempt. If you're only doing two to five attempts of Uber Traveler, your results could be that you make 100 FE, or you lose a significant portion of your investment. Now, I did all of these fights on Exploding Moto. If you want to know more about my build, do be sure to check out my recent video or the written guide, both of which will be down in the description and the videos will be in the card as well. As a result of having a very overpowered Explodey Spider Summoner, each fight took me about two minutes. I killed the boss almost instantly, but there's a lot of mandatory phasing. If you're going to kill the boss once and just want to master its mechanics, it's completely fine if your build isn't super overpowered. But if you're going to be farming it, you do want to be efficient with your time, otherwise you'd be better served by boss rushing in T7s or clearing T8s with high investment via compasses. Honestly, the first two phases go really quickly, but phase 3 is where a lot of the time is spent because the boss can't actually be killed immediately. After the start of phase 3, he'll go down to about 10% health and become invulnerable, then do two spiral phases. After the spiral phases, he's pretty easy to kill. However, because I have so much damage, those two spiral phases take about as much time as the entire rest of a fight for me. But you didn't really come here for a full Traveler boss guide. You came for the loot. So let's talk about that and break it down. First off, how much did I spend? I purchased 404 The End for 978 Flame Elementium. This means I'm spending around 9.7 FE per T8 Traveler. And it took me about three and a half hours to complete all of the fights. Again, it's hyper efficient for my build and I really did optimize it. Now, interestingly, Traveler has a few guaranteed drops that do add some profit consistency. He will always drop one Truth Ember, which is worth about one FE each. And he will also either drop one Helio Rock card worth about 2.5 FE or a level 21 skill gem, worth the random amount, but in general, more than 2.5 FE. He also has a guaranteed compass drop. This is either a random dazzling compass, or a random shiny compass tied to a specific mechanic, such as God of War, God of Might, Goddess of Hunting, God of Machines, or Dark Surge. This means there is quite a bit of consistent value for every traveler you kill. The Truth Ember adds around 1 FE, the Helio Rock adds around 2.5, and the compasses add around 2. So for every 9.7 FE you spend, you're pretty much guaranteed to get about 5.5 FE back. And that, of course, isn't counting the skill gems, which average out significantly higher, but I think I got somewhat lucky there, so I didn't want to include it in this part of the video. But of course, I mentioned at the start that not all of the drops you're getting are going to be consistent. In fact, there's some highly random stuff that can be worth, well... It can be total unsellable junk, or it can be worth hundreds of flame elementium. The first category here is bases. God's Grace Belt, Lunar Corona Amulet, Sunlight Amulet, and Prisoner Ring. These all drop off of a Traveler, and they'll all be ideal for crafting at item level 85+. plus. The most valuable by far is the Prisoner Ring, with the low end being around 29 FE and the high end being around 70 FE, Though do keep in mind this price shifts all the time, so if you plan to do some traveler farming, check for yourself. I ended up getting quite a few 35% prisoner rings, so this profitability does probably skew a little bit higher than average. On the other hand, for uniques, something else that can either be worth a ton or almost nothing at all. Right before recording all this data, I got a Major's Apprentice Helmet, which was around 200 FE. In my data set, the most valuable legendary item I got was an unidentified infinity worth 17 FE. I did get some interesting things like Ominous Gift and Winter of Origin, but nothing that was too expensive. The other very random selection is level 21 skills. Certain things like Prayer and Defensive Buffer are complete garbage. Others like Flame Slash and Summon Machine Guard are highly valuable. In fact, a very large chunk of my profits, not just from the skill section itself, but the profits from a fight overall did come from the fact that I got two level 21 flame slashes that sold for 198 and 159 flame elementium respectively, and a summon machine guard level 21 which sold for 219. So in total, I got 374 FE from the base drops. 
146 FE from the Legendary Items, 674 FE from the Level 21 Skills, 198 from Compasses, and 269 from the other consistent drops. This means that in total I spent 978 Flame Elementium, and I got back 1,161. For all of the prices that I just mentioned, that is post-tax. In other words, one-eighth of the return was removed and paid as tax because I sold all these things on the trade house. The only exception being the nine raw FE drops, since they're raw FE, therefore tax-free. This means I profited by about 683 Flame Elementium. Not shabby, but was it worth it? Well, I did it in three to three and a half hours, so we're looking at around 200 FE per hour. For me personally, that's still pretty worth it, but for you, it might be different since it was very boring and quite tedious. With that said, I'm probably going to take most of that 1,700 Flame Elementium I got and roll it into my next build, which will be on Gemma. So if you're looking for a Gemma build to play, maybe check out my leveling stream that I just did yesterday, while you're down there leave a like, to check out what I might be doing on Gemma in the future. In a lot of action RPGs, it often feels like bosses are tuned around the 1% of drops. Which is to say, occasionally you'll get something incredible, something that absolutely blows you away, like that 1 in 10,000 infinity, which sells for 10,000 or more flame elementium. And I do think drops like that can be important. It's an exciting moment. But at the same time, it's not very exciting or interesting to feel like you're throwing your money away, doing a boss tens or hundreds of times without getting a return. Now, in Torchlight Infinite, I think Traveler's in a pretty good spot in this regard. You have a lot of fairly consistent drops between the bases and all the other items that I mentioned at the start of the video. However, some of the other bosses, especially the Lord of the Bride Sea and Uber Keegan, aren't really quite as good. Uber Keegan does have a familiar nexus, which is used for double corrosion and therefore does provide consistent value. So I guess that one's not quite as bad, though the average loot versus the best loot is still a pretty big jump, and when we're talking about 30 or so FE per attempt, that does end up feeling really bad. Lord of Avoid C, last I checked, is about 15 FE per attempt, and you can get something that is completely worthless, or you can get something worth hundreds of Flame Elementium. And to me personally, coupled with the fact that it's a giant health sponge, that's demotivating enough that I'm probably not going to be fighting that boss anytime soon. And while this isn't really the question I was planning to wrap a video up with, I am curious. How do you feel about bosses in Torchlight Infinite? Are you a fan? Do you only fight them once and consider it done? Or do you go back to farm them again and again? If you do fight them a lot, are you mainly doing it for the experience or the reward? And if you don't fight them, what's stopping you? Is it because the fight's long? Maybe your build isn't quite up to par? Or does it just feel really bad that you don't get the rewards on a consistent basis? I mean, maybe you just don't do it because it's easier to sell the keys and put that money into upgrading your character. Something that I can definitely understand, because I've done that as well. So let me know all of those thoughts down in the comments below. Before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. And if you want something else to watch, you can always check out my Charge Calling Moto Guide, my previous leveling live stream, or any of the other resources linked up in the card or down in the description below. Of course, you can also always go for whatever YouTube has on screen right now that the algorithm thinks you'll enjoy. That's all for me today. I hope you learned something, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.